Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this playlist, we're now going to switch gears from the abdominal pelvic cavity and the abdominal pelvic muscles and talk about the anatomy of the lower extremities. And the way we're defining the lower extremities, we could just say the legs, but we're really just talking about everything beneath the inguinal ligaments. Okay, so we talked about the inguinal ligaments in pretty good detail in the previous playlist. Now we're going to go beneath that. And the first real topic is what's called the femoral triangle. Now, the femoral triangle is really just something that some scientists found that looks like a triangle. And so it's really arbitrary, but it does help us understand um, a little bit of the placing and, and positioning of some of the important structures as they go down beneath the inguinal ligament to reach the lower extremities. But before we go into any detail on what's in the femoral triangle, we need to understand its boundaries. So it's a triangle, so it has three sides. And on the top, the superior boundary, this is the inguinal ligament. And recall that the inguinal ligament is what's connecting the anterior superior iliac spine, or ASIS, ultimately to the pubic tubercle. All right? um, so that's our inguinal ligament. Then if we look at the lateral border, this is the sartorius muscle. Later on in some other videos where we talk about the actual muscles, I'll refer to the sartorius as the seat belt muscle because as it descends downward from the anterior superior iliac spine, it actually moves medially toward the medial aspect of the knee. Okay, so it kind of crosses over some of these muscles like a seat belt. S for sartorius, S for seat belt. And then the medial border is the adductor longus muscle. This is one of the adductor group muscles. We'll go in again more detail on those later. But just understand that these are the three major boundaries um, in the frontal plane. Okay? So we also have a roof. And the roof in this context is basically some tissue that goes over the anterior surface of this. So in this image, the roof has actually been pulled off and you can't see it. The floor exists in the back, and so pretty much the structures back here in this gray scale color, uh, these are all uh, what constitute the floor. And we'll look at those um, on another picture. So if we imagine putting that tissue, which is yellow here, back over all of these muscles, then that would be the roof of the femoral triangle, and that's what's called the fascia lata. Okay? Um, so that's all this yellow tissue. In fact, um, you can actually see it covering here the sartorius muscle, and then over here, not labeled also, would be the adductor longus. Now it does not cover the inguinal ligament, but rather descends down from it. So this would actually be the roof of the femoral triangle, that's the fascia lata, and so that exists anteriorly over it. Now again, going back to the previous picture, the floor exists in the posterior aspect of the triangle. And the floor consists of two muscles, the iliopsoas and the pectineus. So this muscle over here, where my mouse is, this would actually be the pectineus muscle. Now the iliopsoas, you can't really see too much. Um, this muscle right here, uh, this would probably be the iliacus. And then the other components of the iliopsoas are covered up by these vessels. And we're gonna talk about what these vessels are um, in just a minute. But these are the boundaries of the femoral triangle. You should get to know those. Now, what is in the femoral triangle? Well, there are seven major things here that we're going to talk about. Uh, one is what's called the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Um, this is actually going to supply some sensory input uh, to the superficial structures of the thigh. So lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. We also have the femoral nerve. This one is actually labeled here. Again, we'll look at another picture in just a minute. So here's our femoral nerve in yellow. We also have the femoral artery and the femoral vein. The artery is, of course, here in red, and the one in blue here is the vein. We're also going to see what's called a superficial femoral artery and what's called profunda femoris artery. These two are actually branches of the main femoral artery. Sometimes this femoral artery, right where it crosses underneath the inguinal ligament, which is right here, sometimes we simply call it the femoral artery, but actually a better name for it is what's called the common femoral artery. Because the common femoral artery is going to divide into a superficial femoral artery and a profunda femoris artery. We'll talk more about what these actually supply in just a few minutes, 
But I'll mention this right now, that the profunda femoris artery is the main supplier of blood to the thigh. So a lot of the musculature in the thigh, whether it's the adductors or the hamstrings or the quadriceps, they get their blood supply from the profunda femoris artery. Another thing is that the profunda femoris artery actually divides into two other major arteries. Those are the lateral femoral circumflex artery and the medial femoral circumflex artery. And these, we'll look at them later, but they kind of wrap around and go back to the head and neck of the femur and supply the head and neck of the femur. We're also going to see some lymphatic vessels and then another nerve called the genitofemoral nerve. All right. Now, out of all these structures, there's a few of them that are actually contained in what's called the femoral sheath. Not all of them are. So what is a sheath? Well, in the context of, let's say, a sword, when you're not using the sword, you put it back in its sheath. Normally, the sheath is carried on the belt or sometimes on the back. You can pull the sword out, put the sword back in for storage. So the sheath contains things. In this case, the femoral sheath contains several structures, but not all of these. So the sheath contains the genitofemoral nerve, it contains the femoral artery, and by this we mean the common femoral artery and the corresponding common femoral vein, and then also lymphatic vessels. And these are the only structures contained in this femoral sheath. We'll take another look at this um, with a lot more detail on the next slide. But it suffices to say that all the other structures that are listed here are not contained in that sheath. All right. So here we get a better look at what's in the femoral triangle. So again, here's our superior border up here, the inguinal ligament. The uh, medial border is the adductor longus, and the lateral border is the sartorius. Now this nerve right here that's coming down, this is the femoral nerve. Notice that it's not contained in this sheath. You can kind of, if we zoom in right here, you can actually see this sheath kind of going around in green. Okay. Uh, this sheath does not contain the femoral nerve. However, it does contain a few important structures. One, if you look really carefully in this sheath, we actually see the genitofemoral nerve. Okay. This one is not actually labeled in here, but this little nerve right here that's going through the sheath, it will actually exit the sheath, but this is actually the genitofemoral nerve. This artery right here, this large artery, this is the common femoral artery. Now, in some cases, you'll just see it listed as femoral artery, but this artery that goes directly through the sheath that has not yet branched is the common femoral artery. This vein that goes alongside it would be the common femoral vein, and then we also have some lymphatics that will travel uh, in the in the femoral sheath right here. And notice the femoral sheath does not extend all the way down the triangle. It actually terminates roughly one-third of the distance down the femoral triangle, and then some of these structures will exit it. And those are now the structures that we're going to talk about. Now let's first talk about the common femoral artery. To do that, um, we're actually going to go to this image right here. So this dotted line right here in this little scheme right here, this is our inguinal ligament. And recall that the source of the femoral artery, and I should really say the common femoral artery, the source of this is the external iliac artery. So the external iliac artery comes off of the common iliac artery, and it runs down here. And as soon as the external iliac artery crosses underneath the inguinal ligament, once it's through that, we now change its name to the common femoral artery. Now I'll go ahead and mention this. Remember that the external iliac artery has another branch called the superior epigastric artery. However, that branching occurs before the external iliac artery gets to the inguinal ligament. So that branching is out here somewhere, and this will end up serving some of the structures in the anterior abdominal wall. Okay? So we've got the common femoral artery. It's going through the femoral sheath comes out the femoral sheath, and then it's going to divide. Okay, it's going to divide. Now, it's going to divide into two different arteries. One is called the superficial femoral artery, and the other is called the profunda femoris artery. Now, you see two divisions here of the common femoral artery. One of them appears to be a lot longer and one shorter. There's a reason that they did this in this picture. The shorter one is what we call the profunda femoris artery, also called the deep artery of the thigh. This artery is very important for serving the muscles of the thigh. Okay, it does not descend downward past the knee. That's very important. It only serves the structures in the thigh. 
So for example, this artery would serve, let's say, the hamstring muscles. It would serve the quadricep muscles and a significant portion of the adductor muscles in the thigh. So if you can think of a muscle in the thigh, there's a good chance that this artery actually supplies that. Okay. Um, the other thing of note is that the profunda femoris artery does not extend past the knee, so it really just serves things in the thigh. If we want to get blood supply past the knee, or to the knee, and then past it, we have to use this artery, which we'll discuss in just a minute. It's also worth noting that the profunda femoris artery divides uh, twice, once into the medial femoral circumflex artery, and another time into the lateral femoral circumflex artery. And these two arteries collectively, again with their corresponding veins, are going to supply blood to the head and the neck of the femur. Okay, And of course the veins are then going to drain that and go back into the profunda femoris vein. So the key about this artery, also called the deep artery of the thigh, is it only serves the structures in the thigh and does not descend downward. All right. Now, if you want to get blood supply to the knee and past it into the lower leg, you have to use what's called the superficial femoral artery. Okay, this artery has a few names, and it depends on what the context is. In some cases, this artery will just be called the femoral artery. Okay, so we've got the common femoral artery right here, it descends downward, and then of course it divides. The short division that just serves the thigh was the profunda femoris artery. But sometimes they'll just call this a continuation of the femoral artery, and so it'll just be femoral artery. Okay? It's also called the superficial femoral artery, and the reason for this is because relative to this deep artery of the thigh, it technically is more superficial. Now this name is kind of a misnomer because it really isn't that close to the skin. Overall, it's still fairly deep. It's just relative to this artery, it tends to be more superficial. However, it's not very close to the skin. The other name for it is the subsartorial artery, and the reason for that is because it, it lies deep to the sartorius muscle, and so sometimes you'll see this name. Um, I'm going to refer to it as the superficial femoral artery, um, but just understand that all three of those names are valid. Now, uh, this artery, as we'll see in the next video, is actually going to descend downward out of the femoral triangle and into another structure, which is the topic of the next video, called the adductor canal. Okay? And it's going to descend downward through the adductor canal. And once it gets into the popliteal region, which is really the posterior part of the knee, it changes names to the popliteal artery. All right. So hopefully this blood supply via the arteries makes sense. And let's actually talk about the drainage via veins. All the structures here in the thigh and the lower leg are ultimately going to be returned to the venous system through the external iliac vein. So we've got to get everything back to the external iliac vein, which of course would then go up to the common iliac vein. If we're talking about blood return or venous return from the lower leg, a significant portion of that's going to be via the great saphenous vein. This is a vein that pretty much extends all the way down the length of the leg, all the way down to the uh, venous arches in the feet. And so the great saphenous vein is going to return blood up uh, past the knee, all the way up the thigh, and it's actually going to dump into the common femoral vein. This vein right here, if this is the common femoral artery, then this would be the common femoral vein. And notice, just before the common femoral vein enters the femoral sheath, the great saphenous vein, which is this one right here, is going to join up with it and dump its blood into the common femoral vein. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, now... Uh, we have a profunda femoris artery that serves the structures in the thigh, so the blood there would be drained by the profunda femoris vein. And I don't have it shown here, but there would also be a medial femoral circumflex vein and a lateral femoral circumflex vein, and those two veins would dump into the profunda femoris vein, which then drains into the common femoral vein, you can actually see that right here. This vein right here that goes under this red vessel, this would actually be the profunda femoris vein. You can see it actually meets up into the common femoral vein. And then, of course, we have the regular femoral vein. This is the corresponding vein to the superficial femoral artery, which, as you remember, had another name. It was just femoral artery. 
So this right here was our femoral artery or superficial femoral artery. So the corresponding vein is just the femoral vein. And as you can see here, the profunda femoris vein meets up with the femoral vein and you get the common femoral vein. And then further up is where the great saphenous vein dumps into that. And then of course it goes up through the femoral sheath. And once it crosses underneath the inguinal ligament rising superiorly, it changes names to the external iliac vein. All right, so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of what the femoral triangle is and what structures are contained within it. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.